You're watching Rules of the Game on Rider Nation Station, brought to you by Minster Bank, Plus One Professionals, Albert Sporting Goods, American Legion Post 323, Fowler's TV, Eagles Lodge 767, Speckman Automotive, Ogles Audiology, Rabel's Auto Service, American Manufacturing Solutions, VFW 9289, Ogles Equipment Rental, Guinari's Pizzeria, Vogel's Bake Shop, Schaff Auto Sales, Miller Funeral Homes, and Spee's Chiropractic and Wellness Center. Hello and welcome to this week's Rules of the Game with Mark Sisko. I'm your host, Zach Farrell. Mark, thanks for joining me again. Zach, it's always a pleasure to be here. Mark, unfortunately, the Rough Riders had a tough 10-7 loss to Wapakoneta this week. But we do have seven clips to look over and uh, some interesting things to talk about, I think, from the game. Let's do it. I wanted first, though, to talk a little bit about the kind of state of uh, officiating in Ohio and, and, and the numbers. We, okay. We've talked in previous years about uh, worries about getting enough uh, new blood out there into the officiating. Yeah. Uh, um, is that still a concern? That still is a concern, especially after last year with the COVID and everything else. There was a lot of guys that um, opted out, so to speak. And that's fine. I, no problem there. But when it came, come time to come back this year, uh, about 8 to 10 percent of those officials didn't come back. Wow. So we lose. There's about 3,500 officials in Ohio. So when you take, you know, 350 out of the mix doesn't sound like a lot but it when you didn't have a lot to begin with that's tough now varsity games probably aren't so much of a big deal although I'm a member of a, a group um, that every week there's somebody posting they meet somebody for this or that or wherever and those games generally get filled it's the lower level games that are going to suffer um, ADs can't find enough guys to work and you have no choice but to either call it a practice or you don't play it right uh, do you, uh, they have the ability to play with one or two officials instead of a full there crew? Are me there are national mechanics where you can use three. Okay. Uh, especially at the lower levels, you can use three in a varsity, but the way teams throw it around now and everything else, it would be extremely tough to do that and do it well. Sure. Um, so uh, even that, I mean, it's, it's hard. And with the age of officials increasing each year, you know, that, within five years, it's going to be really tough unless there's a lot of new blood start to come in. Well, if someone's interested in getting into officiating, where, where should they look at it? Well, what they do? You, you have to take an adult education class, and that's given by normally there are some universities or even high schools that will teach the class, and there are folks like me that will hold a class that's sanctioned by the OSHAA um, to, to give the class. There's It's a 24-hour type class, which includes... Um, some on-field experience and some things of that nature um, and then you take the test and if you pass why well, you're you're in and you can start down the road um, used to be it took two years to be able to officiate varsity games well the OHSAA has dropped that down to one year so mm -hmm. if you get your first year in and test to the next level you're in so you know when the OHSAA does that they are looking to bring in more varsity official type officials. Right, well that should make it a little bit easier for people I would think, but uh, still. It's it's difficult and we tried in, those, in the preseason to talk to the kids when we're doing scrimmages a little bit to say, hey, if you're interested, you know, when you're done playing, look us up or get into it. And it's true for basketball and, and football, all these sports, especially soccer, they're really hurting. So there's opportunities out there. Well, that's good. If anybody's interested, then they'll have to look into that and, and, and get out there because there's, there's a big need and um, you were talking before, if, if it continues to go this way, you're going to have to play JV and varsity games at the same time. Or, or back you're going to back. need to play start Thursday or play Friday or Saturday to suspect the games out so there's enough officials. Yeah. And especially at the lower levels, it's, it's really getting hard. Do the lower levels have less pay? or is there? Well, sure. Okay. Yeah, the varsity games pay more. Um, lower level games will pay less. Um, normally, lower levels at most schools will pay four officials, which has really been a big improvement and help. Um, some will only pay three. Um, but, you know, you, you don't do this to get rich. No. You, you, you do it to be a part of the game, stay active, help the kids out. And with everything going on in, in the world nowadays, there's so many other distractions and things to do that this falls by the wayside. Yeah. Well, hopefully somebody out there watching this maybe has that uh, bug they in their They can send an email to you or to the Rider Nation station and forward it to me. Yeah. And we'll, you know, we'll hook you up with the right folks. Yeah. If anybody's interested, we'll get uh, their information to you, Mark, and uh, you can reach out to them. And, uh, Be glad to, yeah. Yeah. So let's jump into the clips, though. So okay. So this uh, first clip was early in the game. It was a defensive holding call on Wapakoneta. Okay. It's going to be on the left side of the screen here, number three for Wapakoneta. 
um, on, on the St. Mary's receiver. Let's take a look. And it's and it's tough to see because it's in the back there. Tough to see that that angle right there. The receiver's kind of off the off the screen there for a minute. Um, we gonna look at a wide wide shot here. Uh, we don't have another. Okay. It wasn't a good angle, unfortunately. It was just uh, on the side. You couldn't really see that one. But um, what are they looking for? I at first I thought it was a pass interference call, and I couldn't believe it because I didn't see anything <laughs> bad. Um, and uh, even though it was a you know a Saint Mary, a good right. for Saint Mary's, so what are they looking at when they're looking at defensive holding as opposed to passing well, interference? Looking, is the ball in the air? Is the ball in the air yet when when the foul occurs? If the ball's in the air, now you've got probably defensive pass interference or possibly offensive pass interference if we're going the other way. But here, obviously, the 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 defender probably got a hold of the jersey and the, the receiver went to make the cut and couldn't, and the defender probably took a step away or you see a jersey tug just enough. To slow him down, which causes all kinds of havoc on a timing play. So, sure. probably a good call, right. and it was the right call. Ten-yard penalty. You go back and you know go forward ten yards and, and replay the down. Well, this next clip that we have was a pass behind the line, and I know Joe and I on the broadcast when it happened, uh, there was a lot of confusion because there was a penalty called, and then it was taken back, and then they weren't sure what it was. They, they weren't sure whether it was a – originally it was a, ruled a fumble because it, they ruled it as a behind-the-line pass, backwards okay. pass. Um, and then they got together and they decided that it was a incomplete pass. Okay. Um, and my question then for Joe at the time was, well, if that's an incomplete pass, then was this pass interference? Because the St. Mary's defender hit the guy pretty soon. So we'll take a look at okay, it here. Okay, let's take a look. This was uh, early in the game, Wapakoneta um, – sort of has a sends their running back out into the flats and makes a quick pass to him. Oh, no, it was a good hit. I mean, we got a we got a pass behind the line of scrimmage, all right? Never crosses the line, so you can't have pass interference on a a throw that doesn't cross the line of scrimmage. Okay. Now, the defender cannot tackle the receiver out there cuz you could get a holding call, but I think it looks like he just he just blocks him is what its technical the name is and and it's incomplete. So is the ball forward or backward? That's, you know, that's tight right there. Right. And when in doubt, it's forward. Okay. So I'm guessing that the backside wing probably made the call because he's looking at the play going away from him. He has the best look. And that's probably a good thing they got together because it could have been a backward pass that was live and free, or if it's ruled forward, it's just an incomplete pass. And I was confused about that. So if the ball, if, it, if it, even if it's the forward pass, but it's still behind the line of scrimmage, there is no pass interference. Correct. Okay. Like I said, you, you can't, the you can have can't holding. come in there and tackle him, so to speak, and hold him, but he came in there and blocked him, and it was a smart play by the defender at that I point. think Wapakoneta was uh, – Coaches were extremely angry that it wasn't called a pass interference, and now I wish I would have known that during the game. I would have sounded smart on the broadcast. Yeah, but well, they, you know, they, they probably knew better. They were trying to buy one there, probably. That's so. why we have you uh, <laughs> anyway. So, and I'm sure the officials set them straight very nicely on the <laughs> sideline. So, well, this next was a uh, pass out of bounds by the Wapakoneta quarterback, and I thought that it looked like maybe intentional grounding. Uh, you'll see at the very end of the play, the Wapakoneta receiver sort of runs back to the ball a little bit. Okay, but, uh, if we could take a look at it here. This was, uh, like I said, early in the game, and the Wapakoneta quarterback just rolled out to his left. So it gets under trouble and just really throws it out of bounds there. And you can see that w the receiver just to the top of your screen or right at your screen. Yeah. Here's another view of it. That's one of those, those gray areas where the rules say, you know, if there's a receiver in the area. Well, it doesn't define what the area is. Okay. Um, I think you see the ball go out way over there. You know, looking at the film now, you know, four days later, I'm thinking that probably should have been an intentional grounding call at that point. Um, but you have the, if you could see that the back judge was in the back pointing at the, and the referees looking for help going, okay, what do we have? And he's pointing at the guy, but by the time he points that receiver had come back closer to the football. Sure. And he wasn't there at the time the ball was thrown. So, so it is supposed to be when the ball's thrown, not when the ball's Yeah. Running. I mean, you know, okay. he's thrown it and he can come back to get it, but there was nobody in the area where he threw it okay. in my opinion. So I would have supported an intentional grounding call there really easily. Okay. Well, this next play that we have was a running into the punter and then a fumble on the other end. Okay. And so 
St. Mary's was blocking, uh, trying to block the punt and ran into the punter. Okay. And then as the St. Mary's uh, receiver took it down, he also fumbled the ball. So uh, it was an interesting exchange of different penalties and change of downs there. All so right. Well, let's take, take a look. look. This was a very pivotal play early in the game because um, it was a pretty good return, and it set Wap Wapakoneta up with a short field. And there you have a fumble right there where the ball clearly pops out at the end. So we have another view here um, from the end zone just showing a little bit more back there. And it, it looked like actually the two St. Mary's players ran into each other, and one of them sort of got pushed into the, into the uh, punter. So did they flag the, the, the so they flagged for, for, the for roughing? They flagged, uh, they flagged for running into the kicker. Running into? Running, running into the punter, not, not, not roughing. Not roughing, okay. So All is right. that a five-yard or a ten-yard? That's a five-yard, and you just move the ball five yards and replay the down. If it was fourth and six and you got five, well, you're still going to have fourth and one. If it's roughing, now you're going to have an automatic first down attached to it as well. Okay. But the, 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 the penalty or the, the fumble kind of negates that, and you're going to take the ball where you recovered it, I'm, I'm sure. You're right. Wapakoneta declined the penalty and took the ball where they recovered it. So it's interesting to me because I, I, Wapakoneta was – that was fourth and I think 15. Right. Um, so they wouldn't have had – they probably would have punted it again. Sure. Um, and – but do you tell your player not to – well, it's kind of too late in the middle of the play, but right. you tell him not to run the ball back because there's a potential he's going to fumble. No, you don't know that's going to happen, everything right. like that. I mean, the receiver is doing his deal, and it, unfortunately it looks like somebody put a helmet on the ball and popped it out, and, and you know, and it went the other way. Yeah, Tanner Howe's a hard runner, and we've seen that unfortunately a couple of times. He, he goes for extra yardage, and that's where you see some of the fumbles sometimes. Sometimes. But you don't want to – I don't think you want to coach that away. It's, <laughs> no. It's, it's good effort, so – um, this next call, uh, we have a couple angles of it, was a snap infraction called on the center. Okay, all right. And uh, we don't see it very often, so I thought maybe we could just talk about what that means. So it's a little bit hard to see on this first clip here. On the, We can take a look at it, though. Uh, from the side, um, the center puts his hand out, and it's a little tough to see because of the helmets that are there. But uh, Oh, you can see the defense jump. They the saw something jumped, big yeah. time, and that's normally a pretty good indication something went awry. Now here from the end zone view, um, you can see the center there in the middle holding the ball. And there's just a little bit of flinch. A little bit of hitch. We on. had one of those a couple weeks ago where you just get a little bit of a, a hitch and he thought, uh-oh, nope, and it's too late and snap infraction five yards and and we go back and we start over. Yeah, and it's uh, interesting because you hear, you always see other linemen fall starting, but you don't usually see the center. Not usually. Yeah. So Not usually. You saw it, and now we've seen it, too, from Rider Nation Station. Yep. So. Uh, we're going to look at the next play. Um, if we just uh, play the clip here, this is a late hit on St. Mary's, and it doesn't happen until the very end of the play. Uh, it was a punt return. Um, and you can see him running down the sideline, and then right at the top of your screen, you see when the St. Mary's guy hit, ah. knock him out of bounds there. Yeah, and we that only was, have one view of this. That was that was an unnecessary block, so to speak, and that's what they got him from. Or anything else is just play was over and it was late, and unfortunately, it's going to cost you. They're going to go back from where the ball was dead, mark off 15 or half the distance, whatever it might be, and, and start over first and 10. And then this last play that we had uh, was just uh, hold in the backfield. So, not uh, I actually re watching it though. I I thought I didn't think it was that bad of a hold call so I wanted your opinion on it but maybe I'm tipping my hat a little bit so <laughs> this was a guard pulled out and a, and a Wapakoneta uh, defender had crossed the line and I thought he put his head on the shoulder and, and took him down but well, let's see we'll take a look and this was a pivotal play because this really put St. Mary's back see right there in that backfield they called that a hold Boy, that's tough to see from this angle. I mean, it sure looks like he hit him square, but again, if he had the hand out and there was a pull of the jersey or something like that to pull him down, and the referee's looking right at it, um, hmm, looks like he had the shoulder in him. I, yeah. Again, I, he must have seen something that we can't see. Yeah. But barring anything with the hands, that was, that was a good hit. That's a tough call for me, who's a former guard and center, too. I like, get you. I'm a former tackle, so yeah. I understand all that business, yeah. You did, you did a good job of seeing the guy come across, and you kind of take him out there, and you, 
get the pleasure of having a holding total they yeah. called against you. So. Well, it works sometimes. St. Mary's was able to recover a little bit uh, and then unfortunately had a uh, fumble on a, on a pull cat uh, a couple plays later, and uh, that was kind of a nail in the coffin uh, for the end of the game there. But uh, um, overall, a lot of good clips and, and uh, not too bad officiating, I didn't think, from either side. So uh, at least it was consistent for each side. Well, there so you go. That's all you can hope that's, for, right? That's all you can ask for. So. We want to thank Mark Sisko again for coming and joining us. Zach, always a pleasure. Rough Riders are playing Ottawa Glandorf this week. Unfortunately, Rider Nation Station is unable to bring uh, the broadcast this week just to, due to space and, and issues up there with their stadium. But uh, we're going to be back the following week, and uh, we will have clips from the OG game this week, though, that uh, you and I will still go over. So Traditionally, that always yields a few clips that we can talk about. Absolutely. Uh, it's going to be a, a battle as a as was last week. So thanks for joining me again, Mark. Thanks, and uh, join us next week for Rules of the Game with Mark Sisko. You're watching Rules of the Game on Rider Nation Station, brought to you by Minster Bank, Plus One Professionals, Albert Sporting Goods, American Legion Post 323, Fowler's TV, Eagles Lodge 767, Speckman Automotive, Auglaise Audiology, Rabel's Auto Service, American Manufacturing Solutions, VFW 9289, Auglaise Equipment Rental, Gwinnery's Pizzeria, Vogels Bake Shop, Schaff Auto Sales, Miller Funeral Homes, and Spee's Chiropractic and Wellness Center. Thanks for watching another episode of Rider Nation Station. Help us help you by subscribing on YouTube or following us on Facebook.